Good afternoon, everyone. This is a meeting of the... My name is Liz Braden, Chair of the uh, City Council Committee on Redistricting. Uh, we're back in session, uh, continuing this morning's uh, working session. Um, councillors will have a packet with um, three ma three three um, three, ver three uh, versions: the original file version of the Royal Braden map, uh, and then uh, uh, a, a new version, version one, and then an alternate version. This is the the um, narrowing down to the few issues of concern right now, and uh, we'll open. We also have a packet with uh, a map of the South Boston uh, public housing. Councillor uh, Flynn, would you like to... Uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just, before we start, are we able to accomplish something now without the entire body, or are we, are we able to make decisions now or are we just discussing things now? Just I think we are discussing things. Like with, we, we left off this morning. We're still in, in, in the midst of discussion. I know we, we, people had questions. Um, and uh, my, our colleagues are on their way. Um, some of them should be here in the next 20 minutes. OK. Um. And I also realize that some folks have a, have a commitment this evening. So. Um, late this afternoon, so I'd like to just move ahead and keep talking. No, that, that makes sense. Um, the, the only reason I was asking is, w would, would I be repeating myself again, um, going, speaking now and then speaking when my colleagues get back? I'm just, um, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not concerned about it. I just wanted to see logistically what, what makes the most sense for, um, for the chair. If you'd prefer to hold your remarks until they arrive, they, 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 they um, arrive that's, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I, m I might do that if that's okay, all right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Um, and I might repeat myself if more people come, but I will say now. Um, are we, are you the chair? putting forward the vote tomorrow on 1026 so that we can have it in time for the 11 November 7th deadline? Yes. Okay. So we have a meeting tomorrow on October 26th. We have another meeting on Wednesday, November the 2nd. We don't and then we don't have a meeting on the 9th, but we as a body, and I confirm this with legal counsel in the clerk's office, that we as a body can hold a council meeting at any time. We do have our scheduled Wednesday at noon meetings that are set for the year. There's about 40 of them a year. But as long as we give a 48-hour notice, we can hold a council meeting and take a vote Friday. We can take it Monday. We could take it on the 5th. We could hold a council meeting at any time and not have to rush this committee report for tomorrow at noon. And I just want to put it out there that there's no reason. We also could file our own home rule petition to make an exception for this year only, making sure after talking to the elections department, we would want to make sure that we worded it carefully so that it wasn't going forward, that anyone always could have an extension for where they live, because I know there is concern, which I agree who is living in the new districts as changes are being made. They want to be in their residence for 12 months prior. But that exception could be made also if we're not able to, because we're assuming also that the mayor is going to approve it. If she vetoes it, it's going to have to come back. I don't think we're assuming anything, and that's why we're assuming that we, I, I, we set our intention to have a vote tomorrow. You'd... I don't think as a body and as a member of the committee, I, I don't think we took a vote. And you do have the right, respectfully, I understand, as the chair, but I do want to make it clear that the committee and the body of, as a whole did not take a vote in favor well, when, when of our, watching the... Uh, when our colleagues arrive, we can take a vote. 
Okay. And I'm pretty confident that they will vote to. Uh, but are they also confident knowing that we can hold a council meeting at any time? The other thing we said. As long as we notice it with 48 hours, of course, we, so the public knows. We send uh, our proposal, our preferred map to the mayor. The mayor can reject to um, disapprove it, is the yep. term usually, yep. uh, and send it back. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we gave ourselves this week so that we could, we could send it to the mayor, she could disapprove of it, send, it, send us back some suggestions and alterations yeah. that she'd like to see, and then we could approve that or, dis, or override it with a veto, mm -hmm. and then we send it back. Right, but, I'm so not... we're giving ourselves, given, we're giving ourselves some Leeway. Some space to leeway to do that, right? It's, and also the other concern we have, and and you know, frankly, this is not ideal. The other concern I'm hearing from uh, from our staffs and our our colleagues is this has taken an inordinate amount of work. We've had sure. hearings yeah. and working sessions and uh, a lot of pressure on our on our on our central staff, uh, and frankly, all of us have other important work to be doing and all of our other priorities and legislative priorities are sitting on the sideline waiting for this to get done. Well, so I really am very intentional in my, my intention or my desire to have this done and dusted and, and voted on tomorrow. Because I, would, I would like that too if it didn't feel rushed and I agree and when we went through the budget hearing it seemed like everything came to a halt. There were l tens and twenty meetings a week and hearings and meetings out in the district. Absolutely, I agree. And as an at-large counselor, I have to cover even more across the city. I am missing events. I am right now. But I do believe that it only happens once every 10 years. It's not yearly like the budget. And we do have to know. And I think that it's just freeing up the pressure of hurrying up to just get something passed and not be happy with it, that we could have the meeting tomorrow morning, um, Thursday morning. I'm not saying month, I'm not saying by December 1st, I'm saying we could give ourselves a little breather room. If My, sen my sense from talking to my colleagues about the, the, the various options that we're really narrowing down on right now is that we are close to getting to consensus okay. by a majority of the members of this council. Okay, and I do wanna just say then and I know I'm an at-large city councillor. I'm getting lots of people telling me you shouldn't care, but I do care. Because I care about the city and I care about all of these districts and all of these neighborhoods. And the council president said it when he spoke last week and others too, that there was a belief that the seven votes were already there before this was even filed. So there oh, is a feeling that we already knew that this map, and many people even submitted absent votes for the council meeting last week in a working session stating in writing that they wanted to go on record saying they're in favor of this map that we hadn't even worked on. And we weren't even sure that this was going to be the base map that we worked off of. And I do think we got great work done before we had to break. And I think we should continue the good work, so I will finish there. But I will repeat that if more councilors come back. There's not all of us here right now, and there's a, just a feeling that their, their mind was made up before any of this work was made. That's I, why I, you know you'll have the vote. I can assure you that when the map that was offered by advocates was brought to us, we were not counting votes. Okay. I was not polling people. I wasn't meeting in private rooms with large groups of councillors. But and, and in the course of all the conversations, and we go through this long list of hearings and working sessions, uh, you know, you get the sentiment and the sense of people have said, yes, they approve of this, they, they think this is a way to go. So, you know, we have a sense of where the support for the, the map is and the, and the intention of working to uh, create an opportunity district so in, in District 3 that, that it, communities of color have... have have an opportunity to elect a, okay. a candidate of their choice. And it, we've gone through, we've had legal advice. Yes, we have, not our own yet, but and yes. And we've had analysis from several mm. different experts. We have. Several, not just one, several. Could I say one more thing, please, um, Madam Chair? Yes, Councillor Murphy. So, when, first of all, District 3 is already an opportunity district. It is already a minority majority. I know we've gone back and forth and with the packing and the terms, and I've done 
my homework also, but I want to say something different. When this task was brought before the council and they needed to add a fourth opportunity district, a minority majority district, the then chair went to the councilor in district five and said, it's going to be your district. We're going to make changes, drastic changes in your district and starting a good 12 months before we're here, went into that community and had meetings in that community to let the neighbors in that district know that was going to be disrupted the most. We always know that there's edges and fringes and lots of people have spoke on, I want this moved here or that there. And district one is talking about like which district in the downtown and all of that input matters. But when the counselor who is being disrupted the most, the district that's being disrupted the most and in the neighborhood it's being disrupted the most, hasn't had a meeting in their district, in their neighborhood, yet to talk about it and it's feeling rushed, I do think that there should be some grace and there should be some time and there should be some pause on what is this going to mean when we're looking back at this. And I respect you as the chair and I respect this process, but I have also done my homework and I know that there is a desire to make changes to District 3. There is no legal obligation for us to make changes to District 3. And there are lots of elections and voting patterns that show District 3 voters will vote for good candidates. They have and they will, no matter the color of their skin. So making and knowing that District 3 needed to grow, because we all said from the beginning our biggest task Shrink two, grow three. Mm -hmm. It's now wipe out the bottom of three, make this change to four, and then save some parts of two. And I, I just think there just needs to be more conversation. And I know the public is watching. I know all of the community cares. I care also. So as an at-large counselor and a member of the committee, I just want to go on record saying that I think we're rushing this. And it can be done before the 11-7 date. We can make sure that any candidate who wants to run in one of the nine districts is living in the district that they want to live in in time. We can, I mean, it's 420 and most of our colleagues aren't here yet. And maybe because their district isn't being disrupted. I have a view of the whole city. I care about Alston Brighton as much as I care about South Boston. I live in District 3. I grew up in the precincts that are being wiped out. I think the District 4 council would be a wonderful councilor in my district. I do. I don't think that would be a problem. But I think the community has a right to say and be heard, and they haven't yet. And I think we should just slow down. And if the votes were there, I think they were already there, and I just want to go on record for saying that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Baker. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, so we're voting on one of these three maps here? No, those three maps are the subject of our conversation this afternoon. So what, hap when, the, what happened to my changes? How come they're not reflective here? They just unilaterally got, got well, wiped actually, off the table? One of, one of these maps, actually, uh, in terms of um, you know, you offered on the on the floor this morning that you would consider taking seven three and seven one into your and seven six into your district. Yeah, so, they're not reflective on anything anything here. Well, you know, that's um, that's not. Yeah, in in and again, I think sixteen we, nine. If 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 we, if it's going to, yeah, there's one here that has sixteen nine going into four nine eight nine. 11, 12, and 17, 13, but. Hmm? That's the base map, though, and the second two pages were changes that Wayne was nice enough oh, yeah. to, so nine. to adjust. The first map is what we're using as the jump off, so that already had no. 8, 9, 11, and 12 together, and both of us had requested if it moves, it either stays in three or it shifts together to four. But Sorry. my question, again, being if, if all those. It, if I was gracious, gracious enough to say, okay, keep the community together, 
move it wholly over to, over to District 4, and then th this, is, this is going to maybe South Boston this way, trying to respect the housing developments. Why is that not reflective here? <clears throat> But, think, and and, and is, is, the, is the committee involved in this at all? Or who's, is this just all you making these decisions? Who's making the decisions? We, this, How is it made? I, I, have to, I have to say that this, this iteration, we started off with the, uh, the, 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 the docket as first right. five. And then we have this, this map, these maps consider, have, have points that have been raised and... There, those, those precincts are under consideration. So how come uh, my are, points? They, they, how come my points that were raised are not reflective here? I thought, I mean, just a little while ago, seven six, all this was was off the table. So I I said, okay, I'll go another way into South Boston. How come they're not reflective here? And is that you making the decision? Who made? Okay, let's let's say this then. Who made? that decision to not have my changes in here, in, in my demographics here. We printed out these because they're a, 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 a step by step. I understand what these are. The question is, how come the changes that I made are not in this packet? We, your, your changes, we can pull them up on the, on the screen in, with the, from Districtor. I asked, we're voting on one of these here. This is what we're voting on. So how was the choice made to not have my changes in here? Was it made by you alone? And if so, why? There's a, a range of different changes in this packet. In these. I understand. We all made and changes this, here and, today. And I, this, saw, I sat through the changes. Yeah. But I made changes myself that made quite a lot of sense. I thought. The numbers were pretty good. District 4 went up to almost 15% black. That's what we're trying to do, right? No, we're also trying to create an opportunity district in District 3. To increase but doing the that, it's, increase it's increasing a white percentage in, in, in District 4 is what we've been, we've been talking well, we about. Increase here. the effectiveness of the opportunity for an opportunity district. Effectiveness for an opportunity district in District 3 is moving things around a little. A little? Um, wow. That's a little? I would actually, hate to see what a lot is. You know, okay, so can you I, answer I, the I, question? How, did, how come my changes, my map is not here? We've got two you, other maps. Why is my map not part of this package? Because that tells me, and, I, and we're not ready to vote, but, but have the vote tomorrow, have at it, great. Um, why this tells me that one of these two things here is what we're voting on. And, where is mine? The, the two areas of greatest concern and the greatest uh, focus of our attention have been the South Boston, District 2, yeah. and the area around uh, South Dorchester, Fields Corner area. Right. Those are the two areas, and that's what we're focusing in on right now. Right. So why aren't my changes here? Because I I'm, I'm, was pretty focused on that well, myself. Well, I made, an, I made a decision to bring in these maps. Okay. Your, your, your map, actually, your map, actually, I don't know what the numbers are, but I, my sense of your map was that the, uh, the opportunity in, in District 3 was decreased. In effectiveness. Where, where, is, where is that? The effectiveness. How do you, how do you judge effectiveness? Where, uh, can, you, can we see that map and you can tell me what, how you came up with it? Just looking at the numbers. Looking at the numbers? Also, that that you know, looked a lot of, the same terms, as these. Also, in terms of, you know, the numbers of variations on, on, on maps, Dr. Professor Dushin sent in, um, they were running uh, possibly like tens of thousands of options for making a new map for the city of Boston. So we, we're working in a much more constrained way and thinking about uh, small changes. These aren't small changes, These are Madam small Chair. changes. No, they're not. Yes, they are. <clears throat> okay, um, so let me ask, let me ask um, the Vice Chair through you. Brian, how, well, Councilor, how, um, have you been consulted along this, the way here? Like, did, do you, are we, gonna, are we gonna vote on one of these two maps here? Um, how did we come to these decisions? 
I throw out a map today, everybody else's map is here, my map's not here. What, were you consulted on this as the vice chair, as the person whose district is as affected as mine? Were you consulted on these? Yeah, um, yeah I've been in some, um, in the oh, conversation. On these, these maps in particular, from the time we, we left this morning, we come up with these maps, and this is what we're looking at. We're voting on one of these tomorrow, I would think. Were you consulted on that in the last couple hours? No, he's been off site. No, I haven't been on site. Okay, so the answer is no. He's no. been off site. Your vice chair. We, d we generated these maps from the discussion that we had this morning, Councillor Baker. So why isn't mine there? Well, we've got, we can print it out for you if you really Yeah, let's print it out and let's, let's get it out here. Madam, um, yes, Councillor Bob. Yeah, I just wanted to say that, like, as everybody here knows, the, it's the responsibility of the chair to present a report. And the chair has been very clear that she intends to present a report tomorrow. And it's well within the chair's prerogative to say, I am trying to get the sense of the committee on various options branching off of the main option that is what she is pursuing, which I think the chair has been pretty clear about. And it's a map that was filed with her name on it. So I think the fact that that is dissatisfying to colleagues is one thing, but I don't think there's anything unusual about it as a way of proceeding, right? I think that like the reality, just like when we were talking about budget stuff, we got to the point of conversations in the days immediately prior of, okay, can I get a sense of the meeting on X, Y, Z, but not on ABC because ABC is no longer sort of what the chair is deliberating on. So it's obviously every counselor's prerogative to vote against a committee report, but I think that it's totally reasonable for the chair to set the agenda based on how she wants to narrow the report. And, you know, and, and that's, and I think obviously, you know, there was, there was some reaction to your proposed map, uh, Councillor Baker from the South Boston delegation earlier this morning, or maybe it was the afternoon. Um, but I think like fundamentally it's up to the chair whether she wants to be like, oh, actually that's a, that's a new base map that I might propose tomorrow. So let's talk about that more or that is not a new base map that I'm gonna to propose tomorrow, so I, it's not a fruitful place to dwell for the conversation. That's just, I just think the chair is operating as any of us would in a situation where we had to narrow to a committee report. Councilor Baker? There's no consistency here. Well, consistency is what I'm looking for. We've consistently been inconsistent. The, the housing developments a couple nights ago needed to stay in South Boston. Needed to stay in South Boston. Now I guess they don't need to stay in South Boston because we're gonna vote on taking seven six seven five six one and whatever else I like. Councilor so, Baker, so, uh, Councilor Baker uh, may, right, may right. interject. You can move on to somebody There's else. a packet here. There's, yeah. there's several dis different iterations that are up for discussion. Is mine in there? We, Yours is not in here. Oh, geez, that's a surprise. No, this is, this is the map that, that I, as the chair, were working off. Hey, can I ask you a question? How'd you come to that decision? To, to, this to, is the map We worked that, on a base map. This is the map that, that we filed, Braden and Arroyo filed. We worked on a base and map. Was, and it was, it was base, it, we start, Braden and Morel, we, we filed a map. We put it out for, for review and comments. Folks in the advocacy community looked at it and they said they came in and brought some suggestions. Councillor Arroyo and I took some of those, we took their suggestion off the Morel map, written Morel map, we, we, we took the advocacy community's suggestions and we made further adjustments to it. So this map has been in tr through many iterations and we've discussed it at length. Have we? We have. Can I ask you a question, Madam Chair? Yes. So the first exercise we did was we, we split the, we assigned the split precincts. That was our base map. That's what we were calling our base map, I don't know, a month ago. How does that base map get replaced when we never worked on the base map. How, how, can, you, can you run me through your the thought process there? Was, was, the chair, was the vice chair involved in that decision? No, the base map was basically 
unifying all those those split precincts into in, into present day districts, so that we could start moving things around. And then, then we did start moving things around. Then that's when people started generating their own maps. Councillor Roy and Councillor Fernandez drew a map. Councillor Worrell and myself drew a map. Yeah, you so drew when... A map. You drew a map. Councillor Murphy drew a map. Yeah, we haven't even talked about my map. Not once. So, so how did... The, again, back to the, the, disc, the, the changes that I made this morning. That's not showing up any place. Is that because of advocacy from the South Boston councillors? And is that all it takes? Advocacy from which, from the South you, Boston. Well, what? because because I, I I said I said you know give me seven seven one two and three along the beach resiliency. There's 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 several variations on the South Boston. This is why we're here to discuss. Yeah, but I don't see mine here. Well, you're, you, you know, your, your little numbers are on the, on the page here. So oh, are they? Seven, yeah. But that's not my changes, Madam Chair. You, have, no you have two maps. You have two maps here that we worked on today. And I threw, I threw out some suggestions, and they're not here. So I think for now, we're going to work off focusing. For, na for now, until tomorrow, till we take a vote on it. For now. For now? We, need to, we need to come to some consensus about the South Boston precincts. So how come we're not talking about all of them then? It, it's because, easy. because those other ones are off the table. One, two, and three are off the table? You can say yes, I, I and then I'll drop it. I think uh, my sense from my colleagues in, in South Boston is, you know, uh, they're resistant to taking anything. Oh, so you example. answered a question there. So meaning... Yes, it was the advocacy between the two South Boston councillors. Those are off the table. That's why my, my map no. isn't here today? No. And, and how did we come around to now the housing developments are okay leaving South Boston? No. What did that discussion look like? Well, exactly. That's why I would love to get to having a discussion about what we can move. Up, move. So thank you, Councillor uh, Baker. We've been joined by uh, Councillor Coletta. Would you like to um, take the floor? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I unfortunately have to leave early, so I wanted to be sure to get on the record and provide my comments um, before I have to go, so thank you. Um, I think I just want to respond directly to my colleague from, from District 3, um, Councillor Baker, talking about consistency and how this has been a messy process. I think bureaucracy is supposed to be messy. There are varying interests, and I think the Chair has... Um, provided in good faith uh, a compromise and has shown that she's willing to move different precincts around with the variations that are presented here. And I think as chair, just to double down and echo Councillor Box comments, as chair, she has the discretion to set and frame the conversation. Um, and just in, in terms of votes already being counted or taken, clearly that's not the case because there are variations here and there's been a given poll as there should be in this process. And so anchoring this conversation in these two maps, because I think there's some there there, with the exception of the housing developments in, in South Boston, um, I am favorable to, to version two that's been presented here. Just understanding that what is presented right now in version one, where it's this T looking thing, that is a little um, concerning and screams gerrymandering to me personally. 315, 61, 610. Um, so I am favorable to version two. I don't want to open us up for a lawsuit. Um, but what does concern me even about the version two aspect of all of this is that 7576 um, has, I think it's the Ann Lynch home at Old Colony, and this building juts into 74. So that's something that I think is outstanding that we have to figure out. Um, and then I also, I believe based on what Councillor Worrell has said uh, yesterday, 16-3 um, was a precinct of concern that I don't think that we have figured out yet, and I do support it. If we need to shed down there to go up into 7-4, that we should consider 16-3 as, as being a part of the conversation. Thank you, Councillor Kalena. 
so let's get down to talking about maps here. Um, the um, the Braden Arroyo, the first page is Braden Arroyo map as filed. And um, then uh, the draft version is the T shirt or the T space. Um, I think uh, we have um, I heard that it does look weird. And um, is there looking weird? Is is it possible test? But um, we also need to consider uh, the conversation around uh, public housing in uh, in this in in District Two. And Councillor Bach, um, would you like to um, speak to? The, um, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, a couple of thoughts on this. Um, one would just be that um, I, I do think it would be worth asking the question of. So, I'm, if I'm on the the T-shaped one um, that has 610 in District Three, um, you know, taking 610 out of District 3, putting it back into District 2, and then looking at moving 15-2 into District 3, um, I think would be good. And then I think you'd probably still need to then, you'd need to flip something into um, District 2 to get it down below. Um, so options on that front would be, uh, one option would be for 3, the Tent City Precinct, going into um, District 7, but I'm cognizant of the concern about the um, overall black population in District 7. Um, I think 4-3 is a more diverse precinct than a lot of the South End ones, but another another option would be flipping 5-13 um, Bay Village into District 8. I'm just, I, that's like the only precinct there that I could add and still be under the 5% threshold. Um, but that would be those would be a couple of suggestions on how to how to remove 610 um, while still trying to um, keep all of the public housing in South Boston. Another thing I wanted to say, if you went to the um, if if you I I do think look I think so maybe staying on this page just to be simple. But if I think that if for some if we cannot keep seven six in district two, like if that had to flip to seven to um, to district three, my instinct would actually still be to keep seven five in district two because even though I agree and I've said like I don't think we should be splitting old colony, as was just alluded to by Councillor Coletta, it, old colony will already be split if it's not in district two because it's um it's in partly in in precinct four as well. And the, and the thing is that I know that 7-5 also has the West 9th elderly um, community and, and that they affiliate very strongly with South Boston. Um, and again, as I've made a couple, as I, the point I made a couple of times, the problem with the South Boston precincts as a way of increasing pop in District 3 is that um, they tend to, even the ones with public housing, tend to push the overall white numbers up in District 3. So, so those would be my thoughts, Madam Chair, is to get rid of the gerrymander look of 610, um, but then uh, but then flip 15-2 into D3, and then make up the population issue in District 2 with either 4-3 into District 7 or 5-13 into District 8. Um, or if one, if if you, if for some reason, all those pop, those moves don't work to, if we have to keep 7-6 in District 3 to still flip 7-5 back because um, I just think with what with West 9th Street, knowing what I know about that elderly community, given the fact that Old Colony won't be whole anyways, um, the Old Colony part that's in 7-5 can be with the 7-4, and then we've split in 7-6. And then I still think there's the possibility of, you know, maybe we have a conversation about is there, you know, are there are there areas of the city that we could do some quick re-precincting on because it's kind of crazy that we're in this situation. But yeah. anyways, thank you, Madam Chair. Those are some thoughts. Thank you. Councillor Flynn. Thank you, Madam Chair. And just listening to some of my colleagues' comments, but you know, I've said it. I've said it several times, but it, it's it's critical that the public housing developments that are currently in D two. Um, 
stay in D2. And that's, that's important, especially the, especially the West 9th Street, the, the West Broadway, and Lynch Holmes. West, West Broadway is, West Broadway development is probably less than 100 yards from my house. It's right where the, right where the Condon School is. That's where the BCYF Center is in South Boston. They play a critical role in the public housing developments in terms of social services for for residents. Again, that's only that's only a, a hundred a hundred yards from from my home. I, I I walk by there every day by West Broadway Development, um, along with West Ninth Street. I live off of F Street, F and West Fourth Street, and. Those are all my, those are my neighbors. And Lynch home is, is, is only a hundred yards also from my, from my home. So, you know, ma maintaining the public housing developments in South Boston is important. And we're working together to try to renovate as many public housing developments as we, as we possibly can at Ian Lynch, at West Broadway, and, and certainly I support Mary Ellen McCormick development. It's not, it's not in my district, but that's also important to, to support. And I also was a strong leader and strong advocate on that $50 million that went to other public housing developments. Um, I don't know, Council Block, was that in Jamaica Plain um, last year or so? Uh, oh yeah, there was some in Jamaica. There was a number of places, but yeah, Jamaica Plains. Yeah, one. yeah. So whether it's in my district or or across the city, I've always supported residents of public housing. And, but I, it, it's important that the public housing developments um, in South Boston continue to stay there in, in District Two. Um, I know Council Block highlighted couple of other issues and certainly as I as I mentioned yeah during this process I provided a list of at least 14 precincts that that I will that I was willing to depart from and I know I know it's hard to do but I, I, I stated it publicly and you know that's a that's a hard thing to do is to recommend a, a precinct that they, they that I no longer um, think it makes sense for for them to be in District Two. Although I I, I really want them to stay in, but in the interest of, of fairness and getting this process done, um, but that's a lot of precincts I've recommended, and you know I think it's important that we continue to work together. And, and, and listen to each other and try to treat each other with respect, as, as I have mentioned during this process, and work, work closely with each other, but there's always a, a give and take. I, I ha again, I had to recommend over 14 precincts that I had to recommend that would leave District 2. Very difficult to do, but that's, but I think we all have to share in some of the um, difficult decisions that are that are taking place. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Finn. Uh, Councillor Royal. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just trying to piece together what's in front of me, uh, and so I just want to do a quick just what's what I'm looking at. Um, so uh, I see one as filed. I see a second one, which is the new draft version, which people are calling the T-bone, which I agree looks looks like I think that's towing the line there. And then the new draft version two, uh, I noticed on this one because I had made suggestions on the floor, and I'm just seeing this now. Uh, three fifteen, so six. It looks like six three was removed, but three fifteen wasn't added. Instead, four five was added. Um, 2D7, 
uh, and one of the concerns I had about that was uh, the District 7 number for, for black population. Uh, and so is, in terms of the data that I'm looking at over on this side, uh, and I think Wayne, you might be the better person to answer this, is that data, the, the updated data that we have with, with like all of the? Yes. Okay, perfect. So that's separate and apart from what District R might show. Thank you. Um, and uh, just so that I understand it for people who are watching this and trying to figure that out, uh, basically for the purposes of the census, District R separates uh, people who are mixed race, black, white into a different category, but for the purposes of redistricting, uh, someone who is uh, a mix of black and white is actually considered black for redistricting. So that's essentially mixed race. Thank you. Um, but mixed race specifically with black. Uh, and so that answers that question that I had about that number. Uh, and then this one here, I, I had to leave early uh, for a family situation. Is this the one that uh, Frank Baker was proposing, the, the last one that we got? Yes. Uh, okay. Frank asked, it, it, Councilor Baker asked that this be before the body is to be discussed if. Uh, I still don't see it. Where is it? It's the, it should be, there's like a stapled set, and then there's one that was just handed out. Thank you. So that's the Frank Baker map. Yes. Thank you very much. Councillor Flynn. So, so on the on the map, on the map two edits is the one that we keep referring to that looks like a T. Are we saying that? that that's a potential gerrymandering, gerrymandering related issue? I, I think the fact that we're making District 3 hook around the public housing in, in Southie and going into to 610, it, it does look weird and we could be, someone would say, well, that looks like a gerrymandering district, yes. Okay. Um. I think um, Contra Box's suggestion about um, switching, putting 610 back in, in District 2, putting it back in yellow, and then moving 15-2 um, from District 4 into District 3 as a way to balance the population may be a possible workaround to make that more uh, visually acceptable and without, without moving the numbers too much. So. So that was that would be six ten. Six ten would remain would go in would be in district two, and uh, fifteen two would move from district four into district three, um, and it's really just a, a, a balancing of the the the, the numbers because there are similar size precincts. I think one of the challenges in this whole exercise is that uh, we desperately need to have some more re-precincting done because there's huge, one precinct is not equal to another in terms of population. Okay. Councillor Murphy. Here, um, just a couple things. So first, through the chair to Councillor Bach, if that's okay. Um, I'm not sure if I heard you right, but when you gave the explanation of the chair, um, when you said that the first two, version one and version two, came from um, a sense from the committee, did you say, Councillor Bach? No, what I was saying was that as the chair, as the chair is deliberating on what committee report she's gonna put forward, it's reasonable for her to focus in on the questions that she would like to put before all of us as for mm -hmm. her deliberation. That's right. what I was trying to say. Because before that, the question from Councillor Baker was, was this done alone or with the committee? This, the, the, these maps that we've generated, we started off with the Abraden Royal map. No, we I know, I understand. This, this, yeah. this, these changes in this map are, are as a, um, impossible scenarios have been generated out of the conversations that we've had Absolutely. in this. Absolutely, I know, I understood that, but we didn't, right, but only some of the conversations, because I think Councilor Baker made it clear that none of the suggestions that he had made earlier. But I do have one question, and maybe um, Wayne or through the chair you could help. When I first saw the packet though, and I see version one, and then you offered version two, was version two like 
kind of a little bit better, you thought, than version one, or were they just two different scenarios that you wanted to look at separately? Or, because I looked at this first saying, here's the base, the Braden Arroyo, you know, docket 1275, and then I see version one, and I understand that you were saying you were listening to some of what the council, some of the councils were saying about changes, and then I'm looking at version two. So did you want us to really zone in on version two because you liked that one the best, or are both side by side? Both are side by side. Okay. Yeah, that's helpful to know. But and now are we able to um, have Councillor Baker's also? So are there three we should be looking at, or should we just still be looking at the two that you had presented first? I think if, if Councillor Baker would like to speak to his th thoughts around yeah. South Boston. Because um, I would just reiterate the block 16.9 which is something I had also suggested and not being a member of the committee, I did say that those four should stay together. We have split 16.9 out and 16.9, if we're gonna cut the bottom, but if we can look at all three, that's helpful. So I'll take the staple out so we can spread them this way for myself. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Baker. Thank you. Um, I have to agree, 16.9, that's definitely part of that neighborhood. It either all stays together with me, this is my opinion, either all stays with me or all goes to Brian. That's 16.8, 16.9, 11 and 12, and then 17.13. Um, and again, <clears throat> we're at a logger jam here because of the interest in South Boston which I think we all agree we don't want to we don't want to split up housing developments. I think the housing developments in South Boston do pretty well. I work with the nonprofits here. The nonprofits that work in South Boston do a good job in their in their housing developments and working with their their strong elected delegation over there. Um, and, and quite frankly, we don't need to go into South Boston. I don't know why if I have to add people we start with cutting cutting out thousands of people in my in my southern border i don't think we need to do that and now now i don't even know what to call it it's it's kind of again back to my earlier comments disjointed dismembered like this the the compactability of a district is so you can develop common interests within a district and I would venture to say that if you sent me over into 17 down on my lower down on my lower border, that would that would provide an effective an effective district. Um, and also, back to the changes that I made this morning. <sighs> district four gets 14.8 percent white. That's one of the things that we're, we're looking to do, even though the expert last week said, don't be chasing percentages. It seems that's all we're doing is chasing percentages. Totally unhappy with all of these, Madam Chair, as you, can, as you can see, as you can hear. I don't think it's right what you're doing to my lower, my lower precincts. I don't think we need to be going in there, and I could, can't say it anymore. I can't bring in any more people to, to try and impress upon you in, the, in, the, in the, the committee or any more emails. Do we have a list of how many emails came in from Ward 16 asking you, pleading with you, telling you that we're a, we're a community? Do we have any sense of what that is? Should we report out on who's sending in? Like how many emails have we got? We can certainly collate that. In, in, again, going into South Boston, we can't go left, we can't go right. I don't know, I, I, I don't know, I don't know where we're supposed to go. We could rectify it all by keeping 17, 13, 16, 11, 16, 12, 16, 8, and 9 in District 3. We wouldn't have to I go think into the, District 2. The, Come again. Thank you, Councillor Baker. 
No, you were saying something. Um, no, I, I had already said it. I didn't need to repeat you it. You were going to talk about political aspirations. What no, this, I wasn't going to talk about this body wants, no, political aspirations. I wasn't talking about political aspirations, no. Councillor Flynn. Yeah, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just want to just wanna highlight again um, that you know, on, on, these, on these maps, on version two, you know, as, as we mentioned, the T shape, um, but on version three, we would lose, um, that I, district two would lose the Ann Lynch homes, um, six one. Um, so, you know, so I think there's, there's, still, there's still more work and I'm willing to work with everybody. There's, there's still a lot of work left to be done, but, um, the, you know, I'm going to continue to work with my colleagues, but, you know, it's important that, uh, I'll, I can stress it again, that public housing stays in, the public housing developments in, in South Boston really have to stay in District 2. That's, Um, that's that. That's important. I'm 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 willing and open, uh, willing to work with my colleagues on other scenarios, as as I have mentioned, because I'm I'm the person that I'm the person that gave uh, recommended 15 precincts to to depart from District Two. So I'm I'm willing to work with my colleagues, but. Um, you know, I hope my colleagues will also understand that when you when I recommend 15 precincts to um, to be departed or to leave from District Two, that's that's not an easy thing to do. So, just want to ask my colleagues to understand that, but also to understand that you know this this process, this district redistricting process, it really needs all of us to be involved and take a little bit of take a little bit of um, precincts or, or, or area that they might not know or be, be, or, or, or be familiar with. So I think there's an opportunity for all of us to continue to work together and try to come up with a plan that's, that's reasonable and, again, willing to work with my colleagues on all of these precincts that I have already recommended to uh, maybe, maybe go into another district. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Flynn. Councillor Worrell. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And just to go back to Council Bach's recommendation of uh, 1502, um, my, my concern uh, with this move is just making sure that we, you know, um, well, one, I, I feel like we go further down into the standard deviation by making that move. I believe it's now, it will be like five, Point, I'm trying to just take a look at this real quick. 5.58 with that move. Um, and then also a little concerned on what now, now District 4 will be the lowest population and what would that do in terms of um, uh, black effectiveness in terms of, of the vote. Um, so just a few questions for you, Council Bach. Con Councillor Bach, um, would you like to respond? No, I mean, I, I, I take that I take that point. Yeah, I've been testing a bunch of different things over here, so I feel like I'm still in process. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I just um, yeah, and like I said, there are also yeah. I, I think I'm not I'm not I don't have a okay. you know. I mean, I think obviously it's all, all it's all pull, pushing and pulling the balloon, right? So it's all a question of sort of what's the scale of any of these changes, but, um, but yeah, we'll look at that, Councillor Borrell. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Murphy? Yeah, sorry, I was, so um, one thing first, Madam Chair, if you could remind me, I know that we have lots of data handed out in the presentation this morning from the attorney and um, you know, the two people earlier 
When I had requested, remember you said you had wanted in, um, was it voting turnout anal analyzation of the turnout that you were going to get and you were hoping to have by last night from the attorneys? Is that what was presented to us, or are we still waiting for our legal counsel to present? I think I maybe miss, misspoke. I think it was just the, the voting analysis that was presented this morning. So the voting analysis that I had requested was what they had shared out, even though they didn't have exact like turnout information. Like, Was that what you were waiting for? I'm just trying to clarify. Or were you waiting for something different? No, I, I think we, we got the information this morning that we had that, requested, yeah. And that's what we all heard here, that they shared to yeah. us? Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, one thing I just want to put out, and I'll say again, I'm not a district counselor. I'm an at-large counselor. Um, so I do respect that the district counselors take it upon themselves to share out and show up and... You know, however, if it's newsletters, community meetings, events, to make sure that their district is aware of what's going on, and this is a big thing. It's some, like we said earlier, some districts are being more affected than others, but um, I do just want to go on record saying that there's real concerns of open meeting law violations when we as district counselors or at-large counselors are holding community meetings to discuss redistricting maps. The meeting I attended with you that we publicly noticed 48 hours in Dorchester, that was a city council meeting that we can all speak at, but when it was kind of said that some councillors, it was on them to really talk to and do their work in their district, I have to kind of push back and say that we're you know, walking a thin line there, and the Attorney General's office has said to me that there's lots of red flags here, and are we violating open meeting law, which is something I know as a body we don't want to do, but if we're in a quorum or even on Zoom meetings, and I know that several district councilors had what I thought were useful meetings, but were, they, were, were we able to all be on and share opinions? I know there were some where we just attended, we didn't speak. But I do think that as a committee, and I know we've gone back and forth, so I'm not going to continue to talk about had we started earlier if we had more time, but we can hold a special council meeting. We can have a few more meetings that are sanctioned by the council that are safe and transparent, because I do believe that we all want to make sure that this process isn't something we're looking back on saying, ooh, we didn't do it right, and now we're trying to defend our actions. And I'm a member of the committee, and uh, I'm a rule follower. I just want to make sure that, and I did say, I know there are a few more counselors here now when I started that, and most of you probably already know this, but we can hold a city council meeting at any time. We have our scheduled Wednesday at noon meetings that we get for the whole year. But if we want to take a vote on this Thursday, if we want to take a vote on this Friday or Monday morning, we could, you know, we can, well, we, we can publicly notice it in time and we can have a special city council meeting and vote on it and not rush. If we feel that we're going to end this soon and a committee report is going to not be what everyone, and not just us, because it, like we said, and I agree, it's not about the district councils, it's not about us as candidates or representatives, it's about the community. So I just want to put that out there. And, and, and thank you, Councillor Murphy. I think um, the meetings that our fellow district councillors have hosted on, uh, on Zoom, etc., I made an effort to attend as many as I could. I was there to listen. There was no deliberation among councillors that I, that I could see in, in those meetings. We were there to listen to the community. Um, I know there's, there was a meeting at the Condom School. There was a meeting in, uh, I think, Councillor uh, Fernandez Anderson had a meeting in her district. You know, I think when we're in those meetings, we're there to listen. I made it clear that when I went to the Condom School, I was there to listen. Um, we, it's, it's, I think we've, we've allowed lots of opportunities for councillors to deliberate on this issue in the chamber and in working sessions. And, uh, 
you know, I, I, I feel that, uh, that we've been as thorough and as, as paid as much attention to this uh, uh, process as we could possibly could in the time allowed. Okay, so this deadline is arbitrary. It's not, it's not a firm deadline. So I just want the, you know, the public to know that, that we as a council do not have to vote on this tomorrow. We can hold it. And we can still get in by the November 7th date. We I can don't do think it. I actually, given the deliberations that we have had, I, I, we're, we've narrowed, narrowed it down to two very narrow areas for discussion. And I really con determined that we were going to present a, a, for a vote tomorrow. Can we then um, move to this last map that was handed out to really take a deeper dive in the demographic breakdown so we can see how people feel about these changes? Looking at the demographics, not at the precincts. If we weren't looking at a map, but just looking at that data, I think that in many ways, those numbers are what I've been hearing through this whole process. They were hitting the goal of what many people, I think a majority of us as a body wanted to see. Which map, Braden Arroyo number two? Um, no, it would be the, I guess we'll call it the district three map. I, it would have been the amendments that Councillor Baker um, had suggested earlier that didn't make it into one of the versions, version one or two. And thank you if it was Wayne or both, probably both Shane that handed it out separately. So it wasn't stapled to the back, it, it was the single one. And it just has the breakdown of the different white, black, Hispanic, and then it gets cut off a little bit. Because I did hear council, I mean everyone, we don't have to call people out, we were all here. I, I feel like those numbers are what we were aspiring for. And I mean, because I also heard about concerns in D3, and I know it's words, but words matter, and I would say when we're not in any voting rights violation, and we know we just have to accept for population, that the word concern can be concerning, right? Is it aspirations? Is it, you know, hopes? Which are, I mean, for some people, that's their prerogative. I'm not, but for me, I think we need to really make sure we're choosing our words correctly. Because D3 needed to grow, D2 needed to shed. And thank you, um, Councillor Flynn, President Flynn. I know it's always hard to give up neighborhoods, precincts, because of course you're thinking of people. You know who lives there, you know the business owners, you know the neighborhood associations. So it is hard, but you know that that task you know, needed to be done by you. So I do appreciate you sharing a lot of the precincts that you were willing to shed, but that was the task at hand, that we needed to make sure that we adjusted the populations. And if other things were wanted, which I heard, which I believe where the vote is going to go, is these are the numbers I see. So I would appreciate if we could spend some time on those numbers to see what we do. So let's compare. Councillor yeah, uh, Flynn. Thank you. So were we going back looking at the map like we were earlier and making recommendations or or will we just kind of still talking about what makes sense and then and then going back to looking at the map and um, i would draw your attention to the packet of the three that's the that's the the basis for the, the what we're going to be recommending the, on the third page um same, the, the packet. Yeah. So, version, version, version one, one and version two. Um, okay. Braden Arroyo, new draft version one. Braden Arroyo, new draft version two. Yes. Okay. Now we've, so, 
I think in, in, there's some consensus that taking yes. district uh, like 610 out of district 2 um, is, is um, so we put that back in in the in version 2. I, I think it, I think 610 belongs in district 2. And then the conversation about um, public housing uh, in the initial um, version um, district and the first as first filed, six three was in district going into district three, so we've put that back into district two. Um, I don't. Can you repeat that again, Madam Chair? And there's a packet on the first page, Councillor Flynn. Yeah. There is. Um, that was the original filing filing that we made, fully understanding that we were going to have this conversation. So uh, six three was put into into district two, into district three, and uh, we heard the concerns that you know that that would um, that would split the is it uh, West Broadway? Yeah, and that the, it belonged with district with six two, so that those two precincts would stay together. Yeah, yeah, right. And stay in district two; they wouldn't be separated. Six two and six three. Yeah. And then that brings us to um, seven five and seven six. Seven seven is already in district three, and it's uh, it's adjacent to uh, seven six and seven five. Um, in in the first uh, version, uh, there was uh, a proposal uh, if we had. There was to keep them both together in in district um, two, and then uh, the, the version two is to keep them together, but put them both together in because they belong together in a sense, and there there be they would also be reunite. They would be in the same space as uh, as um, the Mary Ellen McCormick, um, and they would all be in district three. And I, I know that um, Councillor Bach. I don't know if you were here um, earlier, but Councillor Bach, um, with the knowledge of the BHA housing in that space, suggested that possibly, um, you know, uh, keeping seven five in in District Two and letting seven six join seven seven in District Three. Seven. What, what I was saying, sorry, maybe Counselor, Counselor, if I can just clarify. Councillor Bach, yes. What I was saying was I offered several ways to keep all of the public housing in District 2, which I continue to think is the preference, and I continue to think there are multiple ways to do. Um, but then what I was saying is that if, in the judgment of the committee, that is not possible, then I actually think that going back to splitting 7-5 from 7-6, letting 7-5 go to D2 and putting 7-6 in D3 makes sense because the reality is that if 7-5 seven, if seven, and 6, like basically because Old Colony is split across three precincts and there's already a significant portion of it in 7-4, then if you put 7-5 also in D2, at least even though they're not literally connected, right? It's like those, like two, two of the three precincts with Old Colony are together then. And the reason that I was suggesting that is because the West 9th uh, BHA elderly development is in 7-5. Um, those folks, you know, they um, there's lots of long-term tenants in there, uh, a lot of quite elderly folks, and most of them came in at the time that the BHA did site-based wait lists. So they're like, there's a lot of lifelong South, South Boston folks there and a very strong affinity. And so what I was saying is, and this is not to I continue to have the view and agreeing with my colleague, Councillor Flynn, that all of the public housing like should go back into D2. But what I was saying is that basically that it's better to split the baby here um, than to like bring, I don't think that, I, don't, I think you definitely don't have to move 7.5 and 7.6 both into D3, which is what the last option in the map is suggesting. And I'm saying that it would be better to keep 7.6 in D3 and put 7.5 in D2, I think. Um, then to sort of pull them both across the border together, given the fact that you've already, you're still going to have 
Old Colony be split in 7-4 in that situation. But, so. so, Madam Chair, may I, may I respond? Yes, Councillor, uh, Councillor Flynn. So, so 7-5 and 7-6, it would be, or the recommendation, it would be split because because of why? Um, because that I'm, I'm district two is overpopulation, or, or could yeah maybe, so, maybe council yeah, walk. If I if I can speak to that, so I think that there are a number. Yeah, so basically the challenge is district two being overpopulation. So I made several suggestions. You know, I think that there are ways. I think as I said that you could potentially put Tent City into District Seven. Alternatively, you could put. Bay Village into me, like I think there are a number of ways that we could get the population down so that both of them can come over. And I still think that's the better thing to do. But what I was saying, Councillor Flynn, was it's like a it's like a ranked option, right? Like if the best scenario is to put seven five and seven six into D two, then the second best scenario I'm asserting is to split them and do seven five into D two and seven six into D three, with the third best being seven five and seven six together in D3. And I think that, you know, it would be one thing if we were really uniting Old Colony there. And, and I hear Councilor Royo's point on the connection with the Mary Ellen McCormick. Um, but I think that uh, while there may be that connection, there is, certainly is that connection for folks, for folks in Old Colony, and you can make that argument. I think that the West Ninth folks, like, it's very strongly oriented towards District 2. So I'm just saying that I think that would be the second best option um, after keeping the two together, which again, I think there's a bunch of ways to do, but I think obviously those ways are, um, and I'm trying right now to make sort of a list of all of the ways that you could keep them all in District 2, um, but I know that there are various push-pulls um, from other councilors about whether people want that to happen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councillor Flynn, did you have? Um... Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I mean, my my view is, I think people know what my view is that I want to I want to keep seven five and seven six together. I like to keep BHA united, BHA residents united. Um, but but then I go back to my 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 other point though is I I have recommended. Um, you know, over 15 large precincts that 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 could be on the table, so I'm able to potentially preserve public housing. Um, Cons so, um, I'm Cons sorry, Councillor Flynn. I, I I know you you've 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 offered a list of of precincts that could be moved. I think one of the challenges for us is that. Uh, where do we move them? That so many of the contiguous districts are already at maximum population, and putting a so there's really nowhere to put them. So this is why we're sort of in this tight corner. No, I, I appreciate that, and I, I understand that, Madam Chair. And you know, one district may not be able to take another precinct because they're, they're probably at the max. But that's exactly the scenario that I'm at. But times it by a thousand. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still willing to work with my colleagues and, and, and be, be as reasonable as I possibly can, knowing that I'm way over population. Um, but if, but if, but if a, a district that's exactly at population, you know, may, maybe there has to be a little bit of, um, you know, I think the only way this works is if we each give up a little bit um, or, 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 or sacrifice a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly sacrificing a lot. Um, I'm not asking anyone to do something that I'm not doing, um, but I'm just asking people to be reasonable that they may have, a, especially district council, they may have a, an, an extra precinct that they, they might be unfamiliar with. And, and us district city councilors know one thing is, is through hard work, you, you can overcome that. You can overcome a district that you don't know, a precinct that you don't know anything about based on your willingness to work hard and be accessible and be, be visible. Um, so I, I, I highlight that because that my, my nine district colleagues 
all of them are, are, are extremely hard workers, and they, they can potentially go into a, a, a new precinct and, 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 and do extremely well there based on their work ethic. Thank you, Councillor Flynn. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Madam Chair. Councillor Royo. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, and thank you, uh, Council President Flynn. Obviously, I've noted this before. In my, in my opinion, you have one of the hardest parts of this because you're shedding everything and not really getting anything. Uh, and that's very difficult to give and not get anything new. I know people are getting new precincts that some of the folks have different levels of excitement about some of these precincts that they're getting, but they still get to get new precincts and new neighborhoods and new projects and new people. And in your case, you're just losing people. And so I understand that that is difficult. Um, in terms of just, and I said it in the AM session, I just want to say it in the PM session because I understand that a lot of the focus on this right now is, is D2 for many reasons, but the overarching focus for, for me and all of the maps that have my name uh, to differing degrees of success is to try to do what I consider sort of the mandate that we're, we have with the Voting Rights Act, which talks specifically to the idea of opportunity districts, opportunity districts, which are districts that are defined by having a majority minority population. And in this case, that's District 5, District 7, District 4, and District 3. And the mandate essentially is to strengthen those. Uh, and so there's a push and pull here at the balance of, you know, at a certain level, if you're, if you're doing some of these, is it really strengthening D3 as an opportunity district? At a certain level, if you, if you push in this way in D7, is that strengthening D7, District 7 specifically as an opportunity district? The same questions come up with District 5, and then we've had to wrestle with some of the questions about are you pushing or pulling too much from District 4, which is an opportunity district? Because the overarching goal here is to strengthen as many of these opportunity districts and then to protect as many of the other ones as we can. And the overarching problem here is that District 2 is not defined as an opportunity district. And the reality is when we make these variations, and I understand where people are coming from from the standpoint of, I've heard different variations of this, which is we can do 7-6 and 7-7, or we can do 7-5, 7-6, and 7-7, which is what was presented uh, in the original baseline, I, I believe, with like 6 Three as well, which isn't here, which is fine because I, I talked about replacing six three with three fifteen. But ultimately, those decisions should be centered around what serves District Three best, not what what does something specifically for District Two. And I think part of what I want to make sure is clear is that as we do this and we're we're talking about moving precincts or disrupting portions of this map that it, it be done with a focus on what actually serves the best interest of creating District 3 as a, or strengthening District 3 as an opportunity district without detrimentally impacting 4, 7, and, and 5. And I get that that's a dance uh, and it's difficult. But some of these things, like when I look at this map about the, and I don't know if we have it so that people can see it because I think it's, it shows you how bad the precinct drawing process is. Uh, and I don't think that there's a, an accident if we, uh, do we have like an online version of the precinct that is, the precincts that we're talking about just so, because I know when we're speaking on the YouTube live it shows these maps. You can see sort of the conundrum that we're talking about with the BHA, which is that 7-7 seven, seven squarely holds the McCormick, uh, Mary Ellen McCormick housing. But if you look at the Ann M. Lynch homes, they did this really, I, God knows, I don't know what they were trying to do with these precincts, but basically, and it's possible they were trying to split this BHA housing when they did this precinct thing, who knows when. But you look at that map, and it basically cuts into three different places. The vast majority of the Ann Lynch homes, though, are in 7.5 and in 7.6. And I think if you are going to, which is what my preference is, keep them together, then it makes more sense to keep them together in District 3 with the, with the overall focus and goals that I'm speaking to, if especially if the argument is that we're separating these homes because I'm very familiar with this area. I have a godfather who lives on M Street. Uh, I've been going to Southie since I was a kid. And you pass through this Day Boulevard on the way there and you realize really quickly that they share resources. So 
Mary Ellen McCormick and Ann Lynch, they share the Moakley Field, they share Carson Beach, they share all of these sort of things that are right there next to each other. And so if the goal here is to not separate them, I recognize, and it's unfortunate on the way that they did these precincts, that there's a portion of this that falls into 7-4, but the vast majority of it is split between two and three. And I would say if you had to pick a vast majority on that, the vast majority, uh, in, in terms of, sorry, six, seven, six, and seven, five, and if you had to pick a part of those three splits where it's most predominant, it is in seven, six, uh, with, a, with a portion that is sort of a second size smaller in seven, five, and then a teeny piece, a teeny piece in seven, four. Um, but if you're going to do this, I think they should be together. I think that the fact of the matter is it's those demographic numbers that are incredibly important. And if you're trying to make those demographic numbers up in other places, then you start to try and take them from District 4, you start to try and take them from District 7, or you, or you sort of push District 7. And so those are the major concerns that I have about that. And I would just, you know, again, I mean, I think everybody said it, I don't want to harp on it, but the the 6 one to 6 10 to 3 one, five, I just don't think that's going to hold up. I think, I, I think I've heard from everybody that that's not something we think will hold up. But my focus on this has been squarely on strengthening these districts uh, as best we can. And I actually, uh, you know, have tried this two different ways. Again, I've said this from the beginning. I put one map together that put the Mary Ellen McCormick with Ann Lynch, but in District 2, and then went all the way up through the South End. And there were a lot of concerns about splitting out, in this case, another affordable housing area, which was via Victoria and Cathedral, and splitting that up and changing where they were. And so there is a push and pull on this. There is a give and take. And essentially, that this is, you know, this is how this ended up working out, is that this secondary map went up through South Boston instead of through South End. But alternatively, I think on, I think it's, I don't know if I want to call it the Baker map, because I think there was more to it that Councillor Baker suggested than what's here. But his does more of the sort of going through the South End and goes that way. So there's, there's variations, but I still think that in terms of where we're at at this hour and with the sort of the amount of sort of push and pull between dueling circumstances, I think the 7576 makes sense. And I think if you were going to add something, it's not to add 45 back to District 7, it's to add 315 back to, to frankly, District 3. Um, but I'm sure there's a number of different ways we can work that out and figure that out. But I just think it, it causes less hassle if you start from the premise that the Ann Lynch Homes and McCormick should be united together in D3. Thank you, Councillor Royo. I'm actually going to wind this hearing up. We've seemed to be. Oh, beg your pardon. Councillor Murphy. Uh, my light's been on for 20 minutes. I've been timing it. But if. Councillor Murphy. Thank Hunter you, Bob. Chair. A couple things. So, when I spoke last time, I did ask that we look at the demographics, and then we haven't yet. So, I hope we're not ending this meeting because I did ask that we go through the numbers, the demographic numbers, and we haven't started that process yet. So, I do want to just and you said we would, and then we didn't, so I just want to make sure we will. And through the chair, if I could ask a question to Councillor Bach, is that okay? Yeah. So you had said earlier, um, Councillor Bach, you're on the record as saying that District 3 needs to get more um, people of color, District 4 needs to get more white. And when we look, and I thought, and I hope we do, I mean, I am confident we will, I should say, look at these demographic numbers here, that the numbers presented here do exactly that, maybe even better than what we had imagined. And I know, um, Councillor Worrell, you have said it here on the floor, and we have spoken that you also wanted to make sure your um, percentages in District 4 weren't hovering around that 6, 7, that, you know, 14, you know, any more than 10 was uh, something you were really hoping to get. And I know, and I had said earlier, I had proposed we go to 1907 if we wanted to go west. So I hope that we are gonna go over these demographics so we, especially a member of the committee, that I can you know, make sure we understand what, what these changes made, that we're not voting on a map that didn't give us the demographics that we're hoping for. And one last thing um, for now is, I just wanna remind us that District 3 needed to grow but by taking out 
four large, five large precincts right from the start when it already needed to grow is forcing that movement into District 2. If we gave back 16, 8, 9, 11, and 12 to D3, we wouldn't have to be disrupting District 2 in these conversations about Councillor Flynn already giving up a lot of his precincts, but now realizing because of the aspirations of taking you know, more of the white vote out of D3, even though it's already an opportunity district and a minority majority district, that we're, we're, that's what's forcing more pressure into two and other districts are going to have to. If we're, he already needed, district three already needs to grow and I will just say also, and I know we all know it, but this isn't about individuals, it isn't personal, right? It's not about it, the relationships once you're elected into that district, but for the, this, these purposes, we do have to remember that we're talking about numbers. So I hope, like I had asked, cover the map, look at the numbers, Thank and you. let's talk. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. And I think from the expert testimony that we brought in, I think we were reminded that it's not just about percentages and numbers per se. Um, it is actually about the effectiveness of a community of colour to have an increased opportunity to elect a candidate of their choice. And as the expert said this morning, depending on where you are, that effectiveness could be 35%, it could be 40%, and depending mm -hmm. on the community, it could be much higher than that. And so, every election is different, and we had to look at actual we, results. Well, she was yeah. talking from a national perspective, mm -hmm. and also a, a, a lot of... On, uh, experience thinking about what constitutes an, an effective district. And the consensus was that redistribu redistributing uh, the population uh, and in increasing the white population in District 4 would actually uh, increase the efficiency of the community of color in District 3 and increase their opportunity no, no, to elect I, yeah. a candidate of choice. So really, we could argue all day about numbers and I'm not arguing, percentage. I'm just hoping we No, no, yeah, we, we could talk numbers. all day about our numbers and percentages, and we still wouldn't have clarified anything. So I, I'm going to leave it at that for now, because we've had um, lots of, we've had lots of uh, expert testimony on this issue, and I, I, I really feel that we need to move on. Councillor Bach, you have the floor. Oh, Councillor. It wasn't clear. Was your question just were the numbers on Councillor Baker's map what they are? Asking how you felt about them because you had said that you were hoping that we could get to. I think these that the, I think that I think yeah. that Councillor Baker's map, in terms of the direction of travel on that front, is the right direction of travel. I think that the. Um, like I mean that I mean that I think that given the fact that. We, that we are concerned about the possibility that we that the current D4 is packed and we want to strengthen opportunity districts, then yes, I think that like, you know, that that reflects the numbers. I think I don't, I haven't heard to date a lot of support for this map, but it's, I think in that, in that directional sense, yes. But, um, but I had actually, I wanted to Bach, circle yes. back on what Councilor Arroyo said. Um, not to reprise our conversation this morning, um, but I think that you know it's really important to note that I, I actually think this is about the question of the impacts on District Three. So right, I think that like when when you switch seven five back to District Two, District Three gets a full percentage point less white. And I think again, we're talking about the direction of travel, opportunity wise. I think that's a real that's a it's a, very, it's a very substantial impact for a single precinct. I also think it's worth flagging, right? I think that we are, a num there have been a number of suggestions that we are not pursuing because people are worried about threatening the other opportunity districts, right? Obviously, Councilor Worrell just raised the question of like maybe 15-2, flipping that over, you know, puts the balance in his district in jeopardy. The question of how to solve the, like to both make District 3 more of an opportunity district and unite the public housing in South Boston would be easily resolved by either taking 8-5 out of District 7 or 13-4 out of District 7. But folks don't want to do those things out of concern for the total black population in District 7. So I think we are thinking about those things. Um, but I think that you, I guess my point is to your point about what's the core activity, to me there's a lot of arguments that if we can't get both 7-5 and 7-6 out that we should be splitting. Um, but I also think that it would be better to get them both out. Um, 
if it's if we only took seven six down to district three, then there's you know the couple of ways to um, solve for that population wise. One is as mentioned, you could flip five thirteen, which is Bay Village, back into my district. The reason I mentioned that is because the only neighboring precinct that I could still take without being over the population line. Um, another alternative would be actually instead of switching four five into District 7, one switches 4-3, another one of the precincts that Councillor Flynn had mentioned before. If you did that, it's also um, the total black percentage of Councillor uh, Fernandez Anderson's district is another 0.5% more black. So I'm just saying, I think there are a couple of ways to solve the puzzle uh, if, you, if you divide 7-6, seven, 7-5, seven, um, and to me that would, be, that would be better from the impact on District 3 perspective, so. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Witt. <clears throat> Councillor Baker, Councillor Flynn. Um, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll state again. Um, <clears throat> you're still splitting my community. 16-9 should remain with those higher precincts if they're going to District 4. 16-9 should be with 16-8, 16-11, 16-12, and 17-3. Please don't divide my communities. Please don't divide my communities. Um, to speak on 15 a little bit, I've heard from 15 for many years that they would like to <clears throat> either be unified, so the two precincts go into one, one district, or, or maybe come back the other way and do, I think there's 10 precincts in there, five and five, that's just something I heard. Um, and if I can speak through the chair to, to Councillor. Councillor um, Councillor Baker, I, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but I really want to bring this hearing to a close. Are you kidding me? Yes, I'm serious. I'm in the, I'm in the middle of my statement? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so when you're finished. Councillor Flynn, I'd like to speak through the chair to Councillor Flynn that I have an earlier map that um, doesn't go in first order of business, cut cut out my lower my lower precincts. It, retains your your borders it does it isn't nearly as destructive as all these other other maps are it gives it gives uh, district eight bay village and i can't believe you tried to cut me off in the middle of my statement it, it just shows exactly this, been, what how this whole process I'm, has been totally stacked against me it, unbelievable i thought you were going to be fair I, 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 I thought you were going to be fair Councillor Baker, you're I going to cut me off in the middle of my statement. I'm sorry. I, I, you should be sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I understood when we started this session this afternoon that people had time constraints. I understand, Councillor Flynn, is so somewhere. You cut me off in the middle of my statement. Totally unfair. And yes, we are, mm. we're we're going to end this session very soon. Councillor Baker, uh, Councillor Flynn, you have the last word. Thank you, Madam Chair. And so. I, I just I just wanted to highlight my, my closing point would be I, I still think it's important that seven five and seven six stay in, in D two and I also you know am, am willing to continue to negotiate and, and talk and, and and listen to my colleagues um, because there's there's still a lot of work that we that we have left to do. And I want to continue working with um, my my colleagues, especially district city council colleagues, because they know they know their district as well as anybody. Um, but some of the comments made by Councilor Bach, I think I think we it's important that we continue talking um, in 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 listening to each other. But but I guess my question is, Council uh, Madam Chair. Um, are we able to revisit this tomorrow morning? I or? will, I, as a chair, I will make a recommendation on a, doc, uh, on, a, on a docket in a new draft tomorrow, and it will be up for a vote tomorrow. I'll take all of this input, um, and we will present a, a docket in a new draft for a vote tomorrow. But does it, does it make sense that we, we continue we have, talking with each I other? I think we have talked over and over and over. We have repeated. We understand the concerns. At this point, it's it's... We're not actually advancing the conversation any here. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned.